everyone. Welcome to the second session on abstract interpretation. Uh, at the end of the session, uh, time for questions in order to keep the things rolling quickly. I'll ask that people in the room come up to the front uh, to grab the mic, speak into the mic for the uh, remote recordings. Uh, also a reminder that you can ask questions on Slido. Uh, without further ado then, I will uh, hand it off to our first speaker this morning, Patrick Cuzo. Okay, thank you. Uh, I start with an animation done by my co-author. Uh, they like animation. <laughs> yeah, 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 you see. It's, it's not me, it's uh, Jacob Azzi. <laughs> so, uh, I had the first question. Who was attending Popel 1977? <laughs> me. I was the only one. <laughs> I have another question. What is the invariant in this paper? So if you are cited, you have already understood the talk, you can leave. Uh, this is an int. Mm, no one. So they analyze the analysis, and that's the subject of the talk today. I, start, I will formalize it, and I start with a generic abstract interpreter. I will define the semantics and the abstraction, and it's all finished. So this is a generic abstract interpreter. You iterate from some value while you have not converged. You compute the next iterate by your transformer. And I will change that a little by adding an index which says at each step the abstract domain is going to change. So if I change the abstract domain, I have to change the convergence and I have to change the transformer from one domain to the next one. And also, I add a passage to the limit. And I do that because I want to be able to say that semantics are instances of the abstract interpreter. So if you take uh, denotational semantic, all decays are the same. They are uh, DCPO. The first, you start from bottom. You iterate with uh, Scott transformer. It's continuous. You never stop. And at the limit, you take the join, which is the least fixed point. So you can program that. Then uh, if you can also do uh, program analysis with this meta interpreter, and if you have a widening, you may want to change it over time. That is, at the beginning, you delay, you make no widening. And then uh, when type goes on, you make it more and more imprecise to enforce convergence. So that's why I have the K. So this is the semantics of this uh, abstract interpreter. I collect the sequences that I have computed. So they, they are related by this transformer. And maybe they converge. And at that time, I repeat always the point where I was at convergence. And then I pass to the limit with this function. Or it doesn't converge. And it goes forever. And then I pass to the limit. And so my semantics is a set of these guys. And my collecting semantics, the strongest property, is a set of a single tongue, which is the set of these guys. That's classical. So I have some remarks now. The semantics of the generic abstract interpreter is an instance of the abstract interpreter. Then the collecting semantics is also an instance. And if you make an abstraction which is sound, of the generic abstract interpreter, you have an instance of the generic abstract interpreter. So there are two consequences. The first is you can have a hierarchy of abstractions, or abstract, interpreters, abstract interpreters. And the other trick is that the generic abstract interpreter can be used to analyze the generic abstract interpreter or any of its instances. So that the idea of A2I. So I will start with a very simple example. You see, while two increment x by two, and I, my interpreter want to do a, an interval analysis. So the transformer established this equation. At point one, either I come from zero and x is zero, or I come from two, and so the values of x at point one are the one at L2 abstracted into intervals. 
or I, when I am at point two, I am coming from point one where the invariant was true, I am increment by two. So if I solve this, I have this infinite iterate, and when I pass to the limit, I get this. But I cannot do an infinite computation, so I will do an analysis of this analysis. So to do that, I need the collecting semantics. So what I will collect here is the sequences of intervals that I have computed. So the sequences at point one is the previous one, and then I add my equation where I take the value in the sequence of the other point, L2. And at L2, the sequences of computation is the last I got at X1 where I increment by two. And so my collecting semantics now is going to compute this guy. And when I pass to the limit, I have this set. And so, of course, I cannot uh, compute the collecting semantic of the abstract interpreter, but I can do an abstraction of it. So the abstraction that I do is uh, using Kildal domains, so the bottom, the constant, and top for pairs. So you see I have pairs here. But the abstraction is not the constant propagation. It is this one. I abstract component-wise, and when I have an infinite sequence, I take the lub of the lower bound and the lub of the upper bound. So if I get a constant, it means I have got a stable bound. If I get top, it means I have an unstable bound. OK, so now I can derive this equation from this one by abstraction this way. And I get this, for example, the lower bound at point one is the one I had before, this one, upper bound, plus uh, zero, which comes from the equation initialized to zero, plus uh, this term that comes from the equation uh, increment by two. And now this I can solve. <coughs> and the iterates are finite. And the result is this. It says the lower bound in both places are stable, and the upper bound is not stable. So your problem of stability is only on the upper bound, and this gives you where you want to do widening. So the meta-analysis gives me where I have to do the analysis, the widening in the analysis. OK, and how do I get uh, this equation? By this computation. And it's very simple. <laughs> you start from something which is more or less saying the abstraction is of the concrete is. You unfold, you arrive there, then you have to have some intelligence. So there is one critical step here, and then you say fold, and you get the result, the abstraction of the abstract function of the abstraction of the concrete parameter. And then you apply the fixed point transfer theorem and you approve your abstraction is correct. OK. So there are two kinds of meta abstract interpretation the one that are offline, that you do before the analysis, and the one that are online, which are my preferred one, you do it during the analysis. So offline, we have already seen one example, which is a uh, make an, an analysis of the analysis to determine the widening in the analysis. Yeah. Another one was a packing of astray, where you have octagons on tens of thousands of variables, so it doesn't scale, and you will pack variables in two small groups, where you have the same group, you are related. If you are in different groups, you are not related. This the group you choose then to be of time 10 or 20, then it scale and uh, you lose some information. But a pre-analysis will determine the pact. So I don't insist too much, I go to online. And to do online, I start from the abstract interpreter that we have seen before, and I keep an abstraction of the computation. So this is in purple, you see. My first, I, when the, for the initialization, I keep an abstraction and then here, when I compute next step, 
I concretize what I add, so I have the sequence of computation. I add the last one and I re-abstract the, the result. It's a classical uh, abstraction. So you see alpha x bar accumulates in the abstract the sequence of computation I made for x. I see my co-author say yes, so I am not yet wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I will pass that to the meta-abstract interpreter. And what I pass is the abstraction of the computation plus the current domain, and it will return me the next domain. Of course, if you don't like meta-abstract interpreter, you expand the code here and you say, I have no abstract interpreter. This way, people have no widening, nothing. So macro expansion is not really interesting. And here is the meta-abstract interpreter. You see, you have it here. It receives the concretization, some domain. And from that, it will make some iteration because it's an analysis. And it will return the next domain. OK, you see, that's very simple. Uh, <coughs> so we have to have at least one application. So I will do an application to the design of widening. Not the same I did the first time. The first time it was offline, now it's online. During the analysis, I decide of the widening. So I take back uh, intervals. Uh, you analyze a variable. Over time, you are in an interval that grows. That's what the analyzer is doing. So I have to find an abstraction for the meta-analyzer. And my abstraction is the slope. You see, I take the slopes here going from one point to the other. The slope here is 0. The slope here is this, more or less. I made an error in the picture. Um, so now, instead of having a sequence of iterates, I have a sequence of pair of slopes. But it's still infinite, so I have to do something about it. I could take the average, whatever you want. Here, I take the maximum. And so if I take the maximum, I am in a domain which is infinite. So I, when I do the analysis of the interpreter, I go to the meta-interpreter, but the domain is still infinite. So I need a widening in the meta-abstract interpreter. So you can imagine any one, like threshold or things like that. And this will enforce convergence. And so this will give me a widening in the abstract interpreter, which is determined by an abstraction of the computation and a meta-widening in the meta-abstract interpreter. That's beautiful, no? <laughs> Who said no? <laughs> OK. So let's have another application, which is uh, two relational domains. And uh, I am ahead of time, so if you have a question, I can answer it. No, no question. So when you take a numerical relational domain like octagon, they are polynomial, n cube, the other polyhedra exponential in the number of variables. If you have tens of thousands of variables, you are not going to make it. So the idea is to do the packing, that is, you decompose into a, a conjunction of relations that are on separate packs of variables. So we have seen that already by Minet in the octagon, but Minet was doing a pre-analysis, so an offline abstract interpretation, whereas here we want to do that online, and this was invented by uh, Alvax and uh, his colleagues. Then you had uh, Singh and uh, uh, Puchel and Vechev, they must be somewhere here. Yeah, no, no, no. They and they, they generalize to octagons first, and then to arbitrary relational numerical domains. And the trick is that the decomposition brings no loss of information. So what you do, uh, you generalize to any relational domain, and this is in this paper. The trick is when you have arbitrary relational domain, you may lose some information. You don't have enough information in the abstract domain to be extremely precise. But it works, at least for the complexity. So a relational domain is relation between things. It can be variable, point, whatever you want, addresses on the heap. 
And you see that uh, usually it's exponential of the, in the number of things. So here it's uh, e power six. So the idea is to do a dependency analysis of the relation. And you see that x1, x2, x3, they depend on one another. x4 depend on nothing and x5 and x6 depend on themselves. So what you are going to do is move from this to this domain, which is free instantiation of the basic domain for each one for the packs. So now, it, instead of having exponential of six, I have three time maximum exponential of three, which is much smaller, so it's much more uh, efficient. And of course, when you do some operation, for example, I establish a relation between x2 and x4, the packs are going to change. So this x4 come in the pack, this one is unchanged. And so the analysis change the abstract domain at each step by computing the pack. Oh, that's beautiful, I think. Uh, you, you have a different abstract domain and a different transformer at each iteration which come from the initial transformer that you have defined for the analysis. And what you have to do is a functor, program a functor that move from uh, packs of variable to this. And so all the abstract domain D1, DK, D infinity, they are just instances of the, of the functor abstract domain that you have created, okay? That's, uh, there are more in the paper, like uh, more semantics, more abstraction, more algorithm, more what you want. And it's time to conclude ahead of time. Yeah. So, abstract interpretation, I understand it as a way to explain things, to construct things, to derive an algorithm, to, to do calculational design. And we have shown in the past that it applies to deductive analysis, that was the uh, 80s. Data flow analysis, we did that in the 70s, and so some, some purple paper. Model checking, we had a paper, temporal abstract interpretation, 2000. It showed that model checking is an abstract interpretation of something by something. The trick is that in this, in this one, we also showed that if you have a finite Finite domain with some logic, it's not decidable to do the model checking. So finiteness is not enough. You also have to have properties on the abstract domain, which is what, what you get from the temporal logic you use. Types, it's a uh, popular 96. We prove that uh, in the Milner, there are an abstract interpretation, intersection type. No one ever read this paper. so. If you have nothing to do, you can read it. Symbolic execution in what in my thesis. And today, you can apply abstract interpretation to itself. That's nice. Thank you. You happy? And thanks for reminding us. This is a distinguished paper. And uh, for the first question, I'll take a, a, I am finished. You're finished? <laughs> uh, the first question will be f from someone anonymous, or maybe it's a duck anonymous, I don't know, but it's an intelligent question, which is when you do offline meta-analysis, do you analyze just the analyzer or the analyzer applied to a particular program? It's as you want, but in my uh, presentation, you had a P in parameter, and so you can do it for a program. I think it's, it's better to do it for a program. It will, it will be more precise. You see, if you want, for example, the packs, if you want to do packs for any program, you have no chance to get anything. If you do packs for one program, you will, you will have something interesting. So the idea is you build the, the equation of the concrete analyzer, and then the meta-analyzer, you take this equation and you abstract them. The abstraction will be always the same, but it will be applied to one particular pro program. And the, in which case the offline analysis will be doing some of the work and online analysis would do, I the, think. The so offline analysis will be? Would be doing something like what the online analysis would do. In some sense, it has to. The offline will be less precise 
because you have to do something that is valid for all iterates. Yeah. But in the online, you have to do something which is valid for the past iterate. And you can observe the evolution of the iterate. So you can have A3, A4, A5 abstract interpretation, but I resisted the, my colleagues that wanted to go there. Two is enough. If you count one, two, you made it. Are there more questions? I can answer a question of the previous talk, <laughs> which was, can we automatize the computation I show in Agda with the Van Horn and uh, the uh, paper of two or three years ago? The answer is no, because the abstractions are uh, homomorphic, that is partition, and the counterexample is intervals. So it doesn't, it works only very specific kind of abstract interpretation, which is very limited. Yeah. Thank you for the awesome talk. It was beautiful. Could you comment on the performance? Performance of the online. What um, is the question? Can you repeat that? Performance. Performance of, the online, of what? Yeah, online abstract interpretation. Because it's, if it's offline, it's going to be done once. But it's online, you're changing abstract domain. Yeah, analysis. that is uh, when the, you take the relation example, you have an extra cost to compute the partitioning. So uh, I have no general answer because it depends if you have a relational which is trivial and then. Uh, but uh, the Vechef and company guys, where are they? They were there. They prove that at least in numerical domain, this computation is very small compared to the, the big computation that you do on polyhedra and things like that. So I have no general result on that. Okay, ah, Peter. Do you have um, applications in dynamic program analysis? I know you mentioned it, but you didn't say Dynamic program analysis, you have interval analysis uh, done by Moore in the 66. You can formalize it by an abstract interpretation. You abstract one trace, and the abstraction is many traces. Yes, but I mean for, for the meta. For if, if I wanted, I can see you're using meta. Ah, the meta do uh, yeah. dynamic. No, I have no, no idea. I have to think, okay. which is my job. Yes. <laughs> Let's cut this short. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay.